in this video I'm going to go through a few of the concepts for acids and bases uh, before we jump into acids and bases uh, in a little bit more rigor using things like molecular orbital theory in the next several videos in this playlist. So the first one is the Arrhenius concept. And so this is just uh, the concept that acids form H3O plus and bases form OH minus. And so I have here, this is kind of the, the general formula for an Arrhenius acid where we have just some acid here plus H2O forms this A minus here and H3O plus. And so a concrete example of that is HCl where our A is now this Cl here. And then bases, uh, we just have a base plus H2O goes to this uh, protonated base uh, here and then the OH minus and so an example of that would be the ammonia uh, here plus H2O goes to ammonium plus the OH minus right here and so this is kind of the simplest concept for an acid. We can get a little bit more sophisticated when we go to the Bronsted-Lowry concept and so in this concept, an acid is something that donates an H plus and a base is something that accepts an H plus. And so I have a few examples here that show uh, that show this acid, this Bronsted-Lowry concept of acids and bases. And I specifically chose some examples here that don't use water. And so the former one here, the Arrhenius, we kind of need uh, water for this, for acids and bases to work in this. But when we get to Bronsted-Lowry, we can, uh, I mean, uh, an Arrhenius acid is a Bronsted-Lowry acid, an Arrhenius base is a Bronsted-Lowry base, but now we can uh, sort of generalize a little bit more. And so, say we have acetic acid right here plus ammonia, we form this acetate ion here and this ammonium ion here where uh, this, uh, this acetic acid here is donating this hydrogen right here and the ammonia is accepting it so that it ends up with it right here. And so then we could even take the uh, the ammonium. So we call it a conjugate acid because it can act as an acid. So we could then use that as the acid with this sulfate as a base. So the ammonium is donating one of these hydrogens to the sulfate. So we end up with the ammonia and this uh, this hydrogen sulfate here as the conjugate acid. And of course, as I said, we can use the uh, sort of Arrhenius form of it. So we can have our HCl plus our H2O. Uh, then we go to our conjugate base here with the Cl minus, and we end up with the hydronium here, our H3O plus. And so that is Bronsted Lowry acids. But then there is also the solvent system. And so this has to do with the auto dissociation or auto ionization of the solvent so that the cation is the acid, so the uh, positively charged ion, and the negatively charged ion is the base. And so then any kind of solute, so anything that we can dissolve in the solvent that increases the solvent cations is an acid. Anything that uh, increases the solvent anions is a base. And so the auto ionization of water is uh, a common one we see in acid-base chemistry, especially when you're at the sort of general chemistry level. And so we have these two H2Os. Uh, one of them acts as the base, and the other one is the acid. So then we end up with the H3O plus and OH minus. So the H3O plus being our cation, which uh, in the solvent system, the cation is the acid, just like the H3O plus would be in the Bronsted-Lowry or Arrhenius uh, forms. Then the uh, anion here, the OH minus is the base, just as it would be in the Bronsted-Lowry or the Arrhenius uh, concepts. But 
now we can actually use other things as these solvents. So if we have bromine trifluoride here, so we have two bromine trifluorides, we're going to do an auto ionization. So this one, uh, this one becomes the cation, so that is the acid, and this one becomes the anion, so that is the base. And so if we add a solute like this, uh, this tin tetrafluoride here, or this tin 5 uh, fluoride here, uh, this increases the bromine uh, fluoride, the bromine difluoride cation here. And so this actually acts as an acid because it's, it's uh, increasing the cation of the solution here where something like this potassium fluoride here increases the anion of the solvent and so that is actually acting as a base in this case. So the Kf is acting as a base and the uh, SBF5 is acting as an acid in this solvent system concept. And so uh, in the above three concepts uh, the neutralization reactions are as follows. So the, in the Arrhenius, we have acid plus base going to salt plus water. And so that would be sort of like your, uh, your HCl plus NaOH going to NaCl, which is the salt, plus H2O, which is the water. Then the bronsted lowry we have the acid 1 plus base 2 going to the conjugate base, or base 1, and then the acid 2, which is the conjugate acid here. And then in the solvent system, we have acid plus base going to solvent, so that uh, could be something like H3O plus plus OH minus going to uh, our H2O, so our 2H2O here. So we have the acid plus the base going to the solvent there. And so that's sort of how the neutralization reactions work in the above three concepts. Uh, then we also have these ideas uh, of the pH and the pKa in aqueous solution. So if we have the equilibrium of an acid, so we have HA going to H plus uh, and A minus, and this is the equilibrium expression for that. Uh, then the equilibrium of a base, uh, we have the equilibrium expression as this. Uh, and so in water, we have one of them acting as a base, one is the acid, we end up with the conjugate acid and conjugate base. And so the Ka and Kb for this reaction uh, actually comes out to be 10 to the negative 7 for the Ka and for the Kb. And so in water, we have this Kw, which is the Ka times the Kb. So it would be this 10 to the negative 7 times 10 to the negative 7, which gives us this 10 to the negative 14. And similarly, the Kw, if we take the Ka expression times the Kb expression here, uh, the uh, HA and HA here, here uh, cancel out. This A minus and A minus here cancel out. And so we have the concentration of the H plus times the concentration of the OH minus there. And so we can take the Ka and the Kb and actually take the negative logarithm of them to get this pKa and pKb, which uh, sort of tells you uh, in, in the solvent, in this case, we can be using water, which is uh, sort of the most common solvent. It tells us sort of the propensity of, the, uh, of that particular acid to dissociate. Uh, and so... Uh, the lower the pKa, the more acidic something is, or the stronger of an acid something is. The lower the pKb, the stronger of a base something is. And these are inversely proportional. So having a lower pKa, which would be having a stronger acid, would mean that we have a higher pKb. Uh, and so that would be a weaker base. And so you can see that in this expression up here where the Ka is going to be equal to the 
uh, 10 to the negative the negative 14 over the k b and so as this uh, as this goes down this will go up and uh, vice versa so if we have the k b that is equal to 10 to the negative 14 over k a so as this goes up this will go down and so those are inversely proportional and so I have a table here with the pKa of some uh, of some common acids so we have uh, HI HBr we have HCl here so those are all fairly strong acids uh, then we can see we have our sulfuric acid our H2SO4 right here at least for this first hydrogen right here uh, so the second hydrogen on that would be less acidic. Uh, and so we would actually see that right here. So we see that this second hydrogen has a pKa of 2.0, where that first one has a pKa of negative 5. So that first hydrogen is uh, going to dissociate a lot more readily than that second hydrogen. So it is more acidic. And so, yeah, you can just sort of see some of the these common acids here and their propensity to dissociate that hydrogen ion in water. So that's always the thing to kind of remember, too. Uh, a lot of times when you see the pKa, it's the pKa in water. So the pKa is going to be different depending on the environment. So if you are in, say, in ethanol, so if you are in an ethanol, uh, solution the pKa's will be different for these uh, different compounds but uh, since water is sort of the common solvent uh, usually when you see a table like this one the pKa's are for water for an aqueous solution uh, and so yeah like I was saying the the an acid's propensity to dissociate also means that the concentration of H plus will be increased for the same amount of substance so for instance if we have 0 0.500 molar of HCl and 0 0.500 molar of of ammonium where HCl is a pKa of negative 7 and ammonium of 9.3 uh, the latter will be more acidic because it's going to dissociate more. So you will have more H plus in concent uh, concentration in your solution. And so we can actually measure that H plus concentration using the pH scale, where the pH is the negative logarithm of the H plus concentration. And so P pH is equal to the negative log of our H plus concentration. And so the pH will go down as the H plus concentration goes up since we are taking the negative logarithm here. Uh, and then similarly, if you want to get from pH to the concentration of H plus, you uh, take the anti-log, so negative, so 10 to the negative pH is going to be equal to our H plus concentration. And so we can also measure the basicity or uh, uh, of our solution here by taking the negative log of the OH. Uh, and so the pOH will be equal to the negative log of our OH. H concentration and similarly uh, we can do 10 to the negative P O H is going to be equal to our concentration of the O H uh, and so yeah those are sort of the two ways we could think about uh, acidity so the pKa is sort of the strength of the acid uh, and like I was uh, sort of harping on earlier we often think about it as the strength of the acid in an aqueous solution but the pKa is not going to be dependent on the concentration of the acid uh, whether you have 0.5 molar HCl or you know 12 molar HCl the pKa is the, going to be the same for HCl in an aqueous solution but the pH has to do with the concentration so a 0.5 molar HCl solution is going to be less acidic uh, 
than a 12 molar HCl solution because the 12 molar HCl solution will have a higher H plus concentration than the, than the 0.5 molar HCl solution. Uh, but then the sort of final uh, acid concept here, uh, acid base concept here I want to consider is the Lewis concept. And so this is even more general than the, uh, than the previous three concepts we were looking at. And so in this one, bases are electron pair uh, donors and acids are electron pair acceptors or per, put differently. And this is often the way you think about it in organic chemistry. Bases are nucleophiles and acids are electrophiles. So a nucleophile is something that wants to accept nuclei. And so if we're thinking about the Bronsted-Lowry uh, acids, the nuclei would often be, well, would always be the H plus nucleus, uh, where an electrophile is uh, an acid. And so that is something that wants to accept uh, electrons and so you can see how this H plus here uh, wants to accept electrons so we could have uh, say our NH3 which will have this lone pair here and so that will actually want to uh, bond with that H plus there where this is our nucleophile and so that is the base and this is our electrophile and so that is the acid. And so when we think of uh, the more general uh, Lewis acids and bases, we can often put these in Bronsted-Lowry terms. And so aluminum is an electrophile, and it's therefore a Lewis acid. But we can think about it in terms of the Bronsted-Lowry uh, this way. So we have this aluminum that has formed this uh, coordination complex with the waters in an aqueous solution. Uh, then we have this H2O here uh, acting as the base. Uh, and so it is taking one of the hydrogens off of one of these H2Os. And so we have this H2O go from six down to five and one of them becomes this OH here. And so the OH is a negative charge. So this three plus charge here goes down to two plus. Uh, and then we end up with this H3O plus here, which is uh, sort of what we would think of in our Bronsted, Lowry, and Arrhenius acid uh, concepts from above. And so we can think about this oftentimes in terms of the uh, Bronsted, Lowry acids. And so this is our aluminum with the six H2O's complex to it. Uh, so we can look at what that would look like here. So this water is coming and stealing this hydrogen off of it. So we end up with this OH uh, minus here, which neutralizes one of the charges on the aluminum. And we end up with our H3O plus right here. Uh, so that is sort of how we can think of these Lewis acids, oftentimes in terms of Bronsted-Lowry acids. Uh, but we can uh, keep this a little bit more general uh, and in fact, we don't need uh, sort of the exchange of H plus ions. So we could have this uh, boron trifluoride here as our Lewis acid, and then this ammonia as our Lewis base. And we see that this uh, has these electrons, so it's a nucleophile. This has this empty shell, so it's an electrophile. Uh, and so those come together to form this uh, Lewis adduct here which is uh, sort of a common term in Lewis acid-base chemistry, it, the, this adduct here. And so we can think of this in terms of the molecular orbitals. So we have our atomic orbital, so this empty atomic orbital here on our Lewis acid and this filled atomic orbital here on our Lewis base. They come together and form the Lewis adduct uh, with this uh, bonding pair right here uh, in the non -bond, or anti-bonding orbital, molecular orbital being empty right there. Uh, so this is another common one you'll, you'll see with this diethyl ether here uh, as our Lewis base. So it has this lone pair of electrons here. So it's 
uh, a nucleophile, and then the boron trifluoride as the Lewis acid. Uh, then we form this complex, so this calls it product. You'll also often see it uh, called, as I said, called the adduct. Uh, and so in this case, uh, something that's common to see in these adducts. Uh, so we have the boiling point of boron trifluoride here being quite low. Uh, so the boiling point of our diethyl ether here being, uh, you know, pretty warm, but still, you know, lower than uh, boiling temperature of water. Uh, but when we form the adduct here, uh, that sort of greatly increases the boiling temperature to 125 degrees Celsius. So that's above the boiling temperature of water. And there are sort of four different ways we can think of our Lewis acids. And so the first one is the cations. Uh, so if we have this copper here, we put it in this ammonia, and we end up with this copper ammonia uh, uh, complex here. So we'd have our Cu here uh, and uh, going to NH3, uh, NH3. Uh, NH3 and uh, H3N right there. And so we'd end up with this. Uh, so, uh, so the copper is acting as the electrophile and the ammonia acting as the nucleophile. And so the copper is our Lewis acid and the ammonia is our Lewis base. Uh, then we have electron deficient compounds. So we have the BF3 here, which uh, if you remember from above uh, is this. So it has this uh, electron deficiency right here. So that is acting as our Lewis acid. Uh, then we have this, uh, this fluoride ion here, which uh, is, has extra electrons. And so that is going to be our Lewis base in this uh, sort of category of Lewis acids. Uh, then we have compounds where these central atoms can expand the valence shell. So we have this silicon tetrachloride here. We add two uh, chloride ions and we end up with this uh, silicon hexafluoride here. So we are expanding the uh, the valence of that that central silicon atom. Uh, then we also have compounds where the central atom is linked by multiple bonds to a more electrical negative atom. And so in this case, we're using uh, carbon dioxide. And so that is something that looks like this. So our carbon is less electronegative than the oxygen atoms on here. And so if we then add our OH minus, so this has these lone pairs here, one of them will uh, attack that. And then one of these uh, uh, double bonds, one of the bonds on the double bond can actually go up onto the oxygen. And so we end up with, with, uh, with this right here. Uh, and th so this will have the negative charge right there. And so this carbon here is acting as our Lewis acid because it's accepting electrons. And then this OH minus is acting as our Lewis base in this instance. And so those are sort of the four ways we can think of Lewis acids. Uh, but anyway, this, as I said, was just a... Uh, quick introduction to some of the ways that we can think of acid and base chemistry. Uh, you, there are actually uh, other, uh, there's actually another way we can think of acid and base chemistry, which is the Usanovich concept, but uh, that one, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of it because it's just way too general. It sort of uh, includes redox reactions in acid-base chemistry. And it essentially just turns every possible uh, uh, chemical reaction into an acid-base reaction. And so it's very unhelpful because it's far too general. So I'm not going to really go over it here. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one.